The solemnity of the Epiphany of the Lord is the Gospel for the first Sunday of 2021. And you find it in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. This is Alejandro Burgos from El Paso, Texas. As usual, when required, we'll be taking references from the Good News Translation Catholic Bible, the Catechism of the Catholic Church. What does the Magisterium of the Church say about the Epiphany of the Lord? The Catholic Catechism, the Magisterium of the Church, help us to find out uh, what is Catholic and what is not uh, Catholic. What is the Epiphany? Grammatically, it's a noun. Epiphany, definition, is the manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles as represented by the wise man, the Magi, in Matthew 2, verses 1 to 12. In the, in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 528 says that the Epiphany is the manifestation of Jesus as Messiah of Israel, Son of God and Savior of the world. The Epiphany in the Catechism, the mysteries of Jesus' infancy. Paragraph 528, the Epiphany is the manifestation of Jesus as the Messiah of Israel, Son of God, and the Savior of uh, the world. The Great Feast of Epiphany celebrates the adoration of Jesus by the wise man, the Magi, from the East, together with his baptism in the Jordan and the wedding feast at Cana in Galilee. Matthew 2, verse 1. In the Magi, representative of the neighboring pagan religions, the gospel sees the first fruits of the nations who welcomed the good news of salvation through the incarnation. The Magi is coming to Jerusalem in order to pay homage to the King of the Jews, shows that they seek in Israel, in the messianic light of the Star of David, the one who will be King of the nations. Matthew chapter 2, verse 12, Numbers chapter 24, 17 to 19, and Revelation chapter 22, 16. Their coming means that pagans can discover Jesus and worship him as son of God and savior of the world only by turning towards the Jews and receiving from them the messianic promise of contain, as contained in the Old Testament. John 4.22, Matthew 2, 4-6. The epiphany shows that the full number of the nations now take its place in the family of the patriarchs and acquires Israelitica dignitas. It's made worthy of the heritage of Israel. Saint Leo the Great, Sermon 3 in Epiphany Domini, 1 to 3 and 5. The contrast of the gospel for this Sunday. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the time when Herod was king. Soon afterward, some men who studied the stars came from the east to Jerusalem and asked, where is the baby born to be the king of the Jews? We saw his star when he came up in the east, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was very upset, and so was everyone else in Jerusalem. He called together all the chief priests and the teachers of the law and asked them, where will the Messiah be born? In the town of Bethlehem in Judea, they answered, but this is what uh, the prophet wrote. Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, you are by no means the least of the leading city of Judah. 
for whom you will come a leader who will guide my people, Israel. So Herod called the visitors from the east to a secret meeting and found out that uh, from them the exact time the star had uh, appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem with these instructions, go and make a careful search for the child. And when you find him, let me know so that I too may go and worship him. And so they left, and on the way, they saw the same star they had seen in the east. When they saw it, how happy they were, what joy was theirs. It went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They went into the house, and when they saw the child with his mother Mary, they knelt down and worshipped him. They brought out their gift of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and presented them to him. Then they returned to the country by another road, since God had warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. These are the central characters, facts, items, and activities presented in this gospel. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea, as the prophet said. But you, Bethlehem, Ephratat, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. As Micah, chapter 5, verse 2. Some men who studied the stars came from the east of, to Jerusalem and asked, where is the baby born to be king of, his, of the Jews? And said, we have come to worship him. King Herod heard about this. He was very upset and called the chief priest and teacher of the law to ask him, where will the Messiah be born? They answered, in the town of Bethlehem in Judea. Herod called the visitor to find to find out the exact time the star had appeared, and he told them to go to Bethlehem and uh, ask them that when they find him, to let him know so that they could, he could go too and worship him. The star that they had seen in the east guided them to the place where the child was. When they saw the child with his mother Mary, they knelt down and worshipped him. They brought out their gift of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They returned to their country by another road, since God had warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. In this gospel, we can identify at least five important teachings to reflect. Teaching number one, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in order to fulfill the prophecy of Micah. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea, as the prophet said, but you Bethlehem Ephratat, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler of Israel, whose origin are from old, from ancient times. That's from Micah, chapter 5, verse 2. I look in the future and I say the, the nation of Israel, a king like a bright star will arise in that nation like a comet. He will come from Israel. He will strike the leaders of Moab and beat down all the people of Seth. That's from Numbers chapter 24, verse 17. And also in Isaiah 
chapter 60, verses 1 to 3. About the epiphany, darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you and his glory will be seen. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Here you have the Magi, the wise man from the east, visiting baby Jesus and bringing him some gifts. Teaching number two, the purpose of the journey of the wise man, the Magi, was to worship, worship, adore the new king of the Jews. The start that they had seen in the east guided to the place where the child was, guide them to the place. It was the first act of adoration from the Gentiles, the first one, an historic, historic moment. So men who studied the stars came from the, the east of Jeru to Jerusalem and asked, where is the baby born to be the king of the Jews and said, we have come to worship him, to adore him. They have a nice picture of the three wise men, the Magi, walking towards Jerusalem, Jerusalem and uh, guided by uh, the star. And they found him. And you see the adoration of the Magi. Alongside with the gift that he brought for him. Who were the wise men, the Magi, the magicians from the East, the Persian Empire that visited Jesus? They were advisor and magicians who were very well educated in several disciplines. They served as advisors to the kings in the Persian Empire. Daniel, the prophet Daniel, was appointed when he was there as their leader by King Belshazzar of Persia. He was the son of King Nebuchadnezzar because Daniel was the only one that was able to interpret the dream of the king Belshazzar. The advisors and magicians were brought in to read this writing and tell me what it means to read the dream that he had, but they could not discover the meaning. That's from Daniel Chapter 5, verse 15. Please read Daniel 5, chapter 1 to 29 to learn more about them. Chapter number 3, the visit from the three wise men is a prophetic revelation in the sense that they represent the Gentiles adoring Jesus for the first time time. Go then to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples, said Jesus. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That was from Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. So this is a prophetic revelation about the Gentiles. You have the Gentiles from the East adoring baby Jesus. The wise men brought out their gift of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to baby Jesus. 
what is the meaning and value of the gift of gold, Frankenstein and Mir? What does that mean? Gold. Gold has been known in history as a scarce and valuable precious metal regularly set aside for kings and priests. As a gift from the wise man, it's also a symbol of Jesus' kingships. In the Gospel of Matthew, the escape to Egypt happens during the night immediately after the wise men left them. Joseph was a skillful and hardworking carpenter, and his skills would have been valuable anywhere, but surely they would have needed some extra resources for the trip to Egypt and also for a head start in Egypt in order to be able to buy or to rent a living place for the family. The gift of gold from the wise man was probably put to good use by Joseph to take care of his family in Egypt. Frankincense. Frankincense is a rare and expensive fragrance that is manufactured. It's done from the distilled resinous sap of the frankincense tree Boswellia from Arabia. This essential oil is mentioned 22 times in the Bible. Frankincense was often burned as an incense in the temples. Frankincense was a symbol of deity before and during the time of Jesus and considered a symbol of Jesus' priestly, priestly role. Mir. Mir is an expensive fragrance extracted from the bark of a tree, Comunifora abyssinica, from Arabia. It was used before and in the times of Jesus as an embalming oil. It was regarded as a symbol of death. The gift of mirror to Jesus is also considered as a heralding or a prophetic revelation of the death of Jesus for the redemption of mankind. Teaching number four. Herod was the king of the Jews and became very troubled with the news that the wise man came to worship the new king of the Jews. King Herod heard about this and he was very upset and called the chief priest and the teacher of the law to ask them, where will the Messiah be born? Teaching number five, King Herod conspired, plot, plotted to kill the new king and asked the wise men to let him know when they find the Messiah so that he could go to and worship him. It didn't happen. The wise men returned to their country by another road since God had warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. There came the killing of the children. When Herod realized that the visitor from the east had tricked him, he was furious. He gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and his neighbor, neighborhood who were two years old and younger. This was done in accordance with what he had learned from the visitors about the time when his star had appeared. In this way, what the prophet Jeremiah had said came true. His sound is heard in Rama, the son of bitter weeping. Rachel is crying for her children. She refuses to be comforted, for they are 
that day. And here is a horrible picture about the killing of the children. The escape and the return from Egypt, from Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 and 15, and also from 19 to 23. This came immediately after the, uh, the visit from the Magi. As the Magi had left, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph and said, Herod will be looking for the child in order to kill him. So get up. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt and stay there until I tell you to leave. Joseph got up, took the child and his mother and left during the night for Egypt where he stayed until Herod died. This was done to make come true what the Lord has said through the prophet. I call my son out of Egypt. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, go back to the land of Israel, because those who tried to kill the child are dead. So Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went back to Israel. But when Joseph heard that uh, Archelaus had succeeded his father Herod as king of Judea, he was afraid to go there. He was given more instruction in a dream, so he went to the province of Galilee and made his home in a town named Nazareth and saw what the prophet had said came true. He will be called a Nazarene. And here is Joseph in his trips to and from Egypt. The Messiah will be called a Nazarene from Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. The royal line of David is like a tree that has been cut down, but just as new branches sprout from a stump, so a new king will arise from among David's descendants. Some key concepts that you may find useful uh, to remember. The purpose of the journey of the wise man, the Magi, was to worship the new king of the Jews. The visit from the three wise men is a prophetic revelation in the sense that they represent the Gentiles adoring Jesus for the first time. King Herod conspired to kill the new king and asked the wise men to let him know when they find the Messiah so he, that he could uh, go to and watch him. It didn't happen. The wise men returned to the country by another road since God had warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod. So let me ask you some question to review what we have seen today. What was the real purpose of the wise man to visit baby Jesus? What was the prophetic revelation from that visit? Why King Herod was so upset and wanted to kill baby Jesus? How Joseph protected baby Jesus from Herod? When did the Holy Family escape to Egypt? When did they return to Nazareth? Why they didn't return to Judea and went to the province of Galilee instead? Here you have all the questions for today's mini workshop.
and you have received enough information to answer by yourselves. This has been the end of the workshop, and this was the gospel for the first Sunday of 2021. And I see you next Sunday. Please don't forget. <laughs>